So I've always wanted to get gynecomastia surgery, never really been able to afford it, but I'm at the point where my physical appearance is so important to my YouTube channel that uh, I decided I need to get it. Uh, for those of you that don't know, gynecomastia is uh, female breast tissue or the enlargement of male breast tissue behind uh, the nipple or areola. It's more commonly associated with bodybuilders and mine isn't really that noticeable. Uh, I do have some, you know, I do have some breast tissue that is not supposed to be here. It's not too bad, uh, but my main concern was the areola size and the size of the area around the nipple and that does get reduced uh, in these procedures. Typically, you know, as you know, the chest takes a more natural shape once the extra tissue is removed. So at the end of the day, I'm thinking, okay, it, it can't really look much worse. I'm already unhappy with the appearance to some degree. Uh, so why not give it a shot? I uh, basically did this very you know, spur of the moment thing. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, I was very familiar with uh, Dr. Mordecai Blau, who's a surgeon that's up by my parents' house. You know, back when I was into bodybuilding a while ago, uh, I knew about this guy. Always wanted to get it done. But guys, I have never done steroids. I have never used any hormones or any sort of steroid products that would cause gynecomastia. It's something I have always had. Uh, my nipples have always been this size. My chest has always been this shape. Uh, it's not masculine. I'm not happy with it. Uh, I'm assuming it has to do with me being fed a soy formula as a child. And, you know, although I am happy and grateful for what I do have, you know, I do want to do things that will make me happier. And it's kind of crazy how everything I've done in my life from, you know, my LASIK eye surgery to my jaw surgery to correct my bite uh, to this is literally correcting problems with modern society. You know, there are people that don't have these issues because they were raised with proper nutrition in certain ways. Uh, so uh, this is pretty much before, um, you know, I'm relatively lean right now, maybe like 12 to 14% body fat. Uh, my, my goal really is, you know, when my chest looks better, maybe I'll lean out a bit. Uh, I've always wanted to kind of reduce my muscle mass a little bit. You know, my, I'm not too muscular, you know, I look fit, I look in shape, but right now just a little bit too bulky. Uh, you know, the only real downside I had to my physique right now was, you know, the chest shape. Um, you know, my my waist does go a little tighter once I get leaner, but I've always had fairly wide hips as well, but you can't change that. So you know, whatever I could do, uh, next update will probably be uh, the after the consultation and, and maybe we'll do some filming in the uh, office as well. Uh, just so you guys can get a closer look, uh, you know, obviously the, the nipple size is, is very large compared to most guys. I mean, if I'm like hunched over forward like this, it looks even worse. But if I have proper posture, it doesn't actually look too bad. And then, you know, you know, like when your nipples are colder, they get smaller. So ideally, I'm hoping that the size is reduced. Uh, the shape of the chest, I think, you know, if I, if, this procedure goes well, I maintain proper posture, I build up a little more muscle, hopefully I'll be somewhat happy with it, we'll see. So I just got back from my consultation with Dr. Blau. Uh, he did a little bit of drawing just to demonstrate uh, what he would be doing. Uh, basically, the green area, sometimes he does liposuction, uh, whether it's necessary or not. I'm assuming there might be some unnatural fat deposits in that area although you know considering my muscle mass and my body fat percentage i don't think that's likely uh, the red area is usually where he looks for the actual gynecomastia and uh, in my case it might be a little smaller because i didn't seem to have as much tissue uh, for me it was more of an areola size thing and you know i have a relatively small body frame a relatively small a bone structure. Uh, so I'm assuming, you know, part of the reason my chest developed in this way is is because of that. So, you know, my nipples, the areola specifically, are artificially large compared to most people. Uh, I've always been pretty self-conscious about it. And even though the actual gynecomastia isn't too bad, I definitely do have gynecomastia. It's just, you know, not as evident as other people. The main purpose is once the gyno is removed, the nipple should return to a normal size. You know, I, the main reason I don't really do a lot of shirtless videos and a lot of stuff like that is because specifically of, you know, how it looks and, and just about every single time I take my shirt off, someone says something about it and 
Now, you know, on one hand, I don't really care. On the other hand, if I can do something about it, why not? Uh, so I'm having the uh, procedure one week from today exactly. Uh, I'm going to try to maintain uh, the same skin tone, a similar body fat throughout this whole process, and I will not be working out. Uh, so I will see you guys on the day up. Okay, so we're with Frank immediately following his surgery, which lasted about an hour and a half, and we're just going to hear from him now and how he feels. How long, how, long, how long was I sitting in this chair before I woke up? I would say maybe... You were a little out of it right after surgery. Like Did you, I say anything funny? You, yeah, you were asking for an anesthesiologist to come to your house because you, you love the feeling. You hadn't felt like that ever. Um, you are asking him how much he would, uh, he would cost to, to come home and <laughs> put you to bed every night. <laughs> Yeah, no, as you guys know, Frankie Boy spends up all night looking at UV lights, filming videos for you dimwits. All right, not dimwits, but let's be honest. You guys are, uh, uh, hold on, let me restart that so we can cut it. All right, so we're with Frank immediately after his surgery, which lasted about an hour and a half in total. Um, and we're just going to hear from him on how he feels. Frankie Boy was carved like a Roman statue by a stonemason so uh, we are in the recovery room about half an hour later besides seeing two of people I feel pretty good uh, you know not no real pain laying in this chair having a little bit of fun uh, Yo. I was gonna drive to Manhattan and pick up some prosciutto but it was a treat but we'll have to just I have some caviar in my fridge so we'll have to use that as a treat so I'm looking forward to the recovery process I'm in little to no pain uh, I feel like I can walk and get up, but I probably can't. But uh, yeah, you needed a little help from the OR uh, to hear with the anesthesiologist. So walking right now, we'll probably have you sit for a little longer. But this was great. That anesthesia shit. You guys want to sleep and forget your crazy like divorced wife or married person or negative things about your life. Then you have a little bit of money around, maybe hire an anesthesiologist to quonk you out. Wake up, forget everything, feel good, but the pain is, they didn't give me any pain medication. It's just, you know, my tits hurt a little bit. It's not too bad, just around the nipple area. Um, very comfortable. Uh, woke up in a haze of confusion. Although I feel pretty articulate, I am seeing too, no, I'm not seeing too much. I'm seeing like one and a half of people. But it's, you know, it's a very, uh, it's not a very invasive procedure. It's, it's very, I mean, I'm sure you could even do it awake uh, if they numb the area enough. Um, that's the great thing about this kind of nasty stuff. They're literally just cutting up muscle tissue. Uh, I was actually funny. I was asking them if my, my kind of nasty tissue was like yellow or beige. Uh, I'm genuinely curious. You guys don't keep it, do you? Yeah, we have it. We send it for pathology. It's actually so it's it's not oh, muscle. It? It's, it, yeah, we can. Late? I'll bring it in. We uh, can take a video of it because I follow a nutrient dense diet. I wanted to show that, like, I was hoping that my breast tissue was a different color than other breast tissue as an indicator of nutrition, but that might not necessarily be true. Was there like a difference between the the? Fa I'm assuming the left had more than the right a little bit. The left, yeah, the left had a little bit more than the right. Mm -hmm. There was a little bit more, I think the the left also had a little bit more fat. Um, the right was actually more gland. So the gland itself is like a pearly white. Yeah. So that's how you can differentiate. And the fat is like a yellow globular type of tissue. I'm sure you, you nut jobs are going to uh, ask me to eat it, but they have to actually send it in for examination. <laughs> uh, so maybe we could show you guys a picture of it and just see what we're talking about. And then Frankie Boy... Uh, does not need anything else to look like a Roman statue. I think we are at the point where we are good to go. Uh, so, no, I'll keep you guys updated. I'll keep you guys posted. Uh, honestly, like, the most negative thing about all of these procedures really is the anesthesia, you know? Um, I mean, there was this, this guy who was in the Arctic, and he did, it, like, he cut out his own appendix without pain medication, so... Uh, there's definitely a little bit of suffering that can happen, but in this case, mild pain. It feels like uh, uh, some dirty boy or girl was sucking on my nipples too long. So uh, it's not too bad by any means. I feel good. Um, always, I mean, the nice thing about the anesthesia is I get a little bit funnier, but uh, 
I think that's good. Should I say anything else? No, I think you're good. I think we're caught in. Okay. I always talk about food quality and how sometimes the color of the food can indicate the quality. I know you guys have seen some of my grass-fed beef videos in the past and you see yellow fat. The fat in my body in the gyno is literally yellow. It's very yellow, vibrant, orange colored. That's an indicator that nutrient density in my diet is literally being stored in all the fat deposits. So when you eat high quality foods like liver, salmon, raw organ meats, high quality grass fed meat, wild caught fish, eggs, raw dairy, the fat in your body literally stores these vitamins as carotenes. That's why, and, and other, other fat soluble vitamins, that's why it's literally yellow tissue Whereas the other gynecomastia patients they they had were actually, uh, you know, whiter colored, whitish. Uh, so maybe in the future we can, uh, you guys can fund some, and we'll do a GoFundMe for laboratory testing. It's expensive. If you wanted to test the nutrient content of Frankie's tit fat, it would cost like 3000 per test. So maybe we'll do that in the future, guys, to show you how important it is to have nutrients in your diet. And there was a recent... A discussion by Dr. Eric Berg, who, you know, when they examined vegan, like the autopsies of vegan patients, their muscles and tissues were gray. You know, literally the fat and the lipids in my body are turning a vibrant orange color because of the nutrient density of my diet. I had my surgery last Thursday. It is now Tuesday. And the reason I haven't updated you guys is because I actually have some wrapping and uh, bandages on so I can't really show you guys anything I mean this they let me adjust like I could take it on and off uh, with the velcro and tighten it as well as loosen it I haven't really been doing uh, anything physically strenuous I mean I have done things like close a window pick up something like five or ten pounds but I'm not lifting anything super heavy so uh, this is just what I've been wearing for the past couple days wasn't really anything negative related to the surgery specifically. The three things that bothered me the most were dry eyes. I'm assuming that has something to do with uh, when they tape down your eyes for the anesthesia. Another thing that really bothered me was when they taped uh, these bandages on, they got some armpit hair stuck in the bandages. So when I was moving my arms, I was like, why does that hurt so much? What is going on? And the armpit hairs were actually taped down to my skin, and that was really irritating me. Uh, I alleviated that issue uh, one or two days into it. I literally just pulled the tape off, took a razor, and shaved away some of the hair that was there. Uh, that fixed that problem. On the topic of pain, there was a mild burning sensation on the first day. I wasn't able to really sleep on my side for at least one or two days, but I was able to sleep on my side for the past two days. So the pain has been insignificant, no real pain whatsoever, did not use any pain medication. This might be because they didn't really do any liposuction. They didn't remove any extra fatty tissue. They just removed the gland. And there's not really much for me to do in this update for you guys. I'm actually going to the doctor in a couple hours. Hopefully he takes the bandages off and I'm able to you know, start exercising again and doing other things. I don't know if they have footage or not, but uh, they did record some stuff during the surgery and I was also talking like whacked out right after the surgery. Like I was looking at the tissue they removed and saying, oh, the reason it's this color is because of my diet. So hopefully they give me that footage. If they did, you guys would have known already because you saw it. If they don't give me that footage, uh, I just felt like explaining it now. So I'll check back in with you guys after I see the doctor today. And then we'll probably do a two or three week final update. I just got back from my checkup with the doctor. A uh, very minimal amount of bleeding. Sometimes people are still bleeding. Uh, since I am not, I was able to take off the bandages. Uh, there is, you know, a little bit of swelling, uh, more swelling noticeably on the left side, uh, but already uh, I'm much happier with the appearance, you know. Uh, I'm sure the swelling is going to go down more and it's going to look better, but even with, you know, the size of the areola now, what I have now after the procedure, 
I am 10 times happier than with what I had before. I know that realistically speaking, this was not going to be like a night and day difference because the gynecomnastia wasn't really that severe. Uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, what's going to happen over the next few weeks, how the healing process is going to go, uh, what it's going to look like as the end result. Uh, right now it is May 28th, so probably middle of June, around June 14th, June 15th is when uh, we'll do the next update. Uh, I'll be outside tanning, I'll be eating a nutrient-dense diet, hopefully I'll be sleeping well. So recovery should be pretty quick. Looking forward to seeing you guys then. Uh, this is just uh, an up close look. I mean, you know, obviously still, you know, not the best chest shape still, you know, nipple size is still a little large, but uh, not nearly as, you know, noticeable as it was before. And I'm sure when the swelling goes down, we'll have uh, different results as well. When I start working out again, you know, get some more mass on the middle of my chest that'll help things as well it is just about six weeks exactly after the surgery most of the scar tissue has dissipated and the swelling has gone down uh, there is still a bit of swelling and guys i was watching back the footage i took earlier i didn't realize how asymmetrical my nipples were and that anesthesia scene was so hilarious i had to put it in the video uh it, it's it's so funny but uh, let, let's take an, uh, an up closer look. So uh, overall, the appearance is, in my opinion, already much better. You know, looking in the mirror over the past few weeks, I was like, hey, it looks pretty good. But a after looking at that video again, th he really did an amazing job. So if you guys could please, you know, go check out Dr. Blau's YouTube channel. Uh, check out his Instagram uh, go uh, say hello to him, maybe send him a message on his website if you guys are interested in talking to him uh, about being a candidate for this surgery. Uh, Dr. Blau actually said that uh, he had a gym that I might be able to film in, so uh, he might be helping Frankie Boy out in getting you guys some more fitness content. Uh, I don't know how many of you know, but it's pretty difficult to film in a public gym. Uh, so if you guys could please go over to, you know, Dr. Blau's Instagram, his his website, uh, his YouTube social media. I will actually link that uh, at the end here that you can go directly to his YouTube channel. And if anything, he posts a lot of really interesting before and after pictures. If you guys want to be shocked by guys that literally have like female breasts and then the before and after and how large this gyno tissue can get, there's actually some pretty interesting pictures and looking at the surgery is... Uh, you know, pretty, I, I mean, the plastic surgery before and after are pretty interesting. Uh, this one is up there. If we take a look at, you know, the nipple, most of the scar tissue is not really visible. It's it's right here. It's slightly lighter in color. But but the swelling on this nipple is, is pretty hard. I don't know if it's just a bunch of scar tissue. And the swelling on this one is uh, a bit less on the top and a bit more on the bottom. Uh, so... I think it's going to be another three to four months for all of the scar tissue to dissipate, for all of the swelling to go down. Uh, I remember when I had my jaw surgery, uh, I had double jaw surgery back in April of 2016. My face was mildly swollen for like a year. So the swelling can take a while to go down and return to its normal state uh, in the healing process of the body. Then that'll be the point where it, it looks as its end result. Uh, but I can't tell you guys how happy I am with the results. Uh, I'm looking forward to, you know, getting back in the gym a little bit, working on some body parts, mainly just to to build a more ideal beach body. You know, I'm working on my chest, my shoulders, my back a little bit. I don't work on my arms anymore. We already have, you know, the calves of a Roman statue, so we don't need to do really too much more working out, but, you know, taking the the channel in a more fitness oriented direction is, is going to not only showcase my knowledge from many years of weightlifting, uh, but I think it'll appeal to a lot more people. Thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please like the video, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Share the video if you can. If that anesthesia scene didn't get you to like the video, maybe Frankie's chiseled abs will. As I mentioned, please go check out Dr. Blau's stuff. Uh, he really is at the top of the gynecomnastia surgeons. 
you know, the guy is literally an artist. You know, he used to make sculptures, and I think he still does. Uh, so he's very artistic, very talented, uh, knows the aesthetic, has worked on a lot of bodybuilders, a lot of fitness people, really knows what he's doing. But on the topic of looking like a statue, if you want to be cast out of bronze, chiseled out of marble, forged out of steel, you can go to frankiesfreerangemeat.com, get your hands on some high-quality nutrient-dense animal foods, as well as frankiesnaturals.com for minimal ingredient, minimally processed cosmetic and hygiene products. Whether you want some via liver to make your skin look silky smooth, or some of Frankie's ball grease to help you tan more efficiently, you have many options. Thanks again for joining me, guys, and enjoy the rest of your day. For any of you guys saying, Frank, you're not that muscular, you should really actually work out and hit the gym, the only reason I believe you guys would want someone to be more muscular than this is if you had some sort of like homosexual muscle man fetish. So I'm inclined to believe that that's a pretty large percentage of my viewer base.